Hi, and welcome back to Woman to Woman, Conversations in Black and White. I'm Bernadette. And I'm Linda. And we are sharing our experience of talking about sensitive issues across racial lines and encouraging others to have those important conversations as well. Tonight, we'd like to share with you our first actual conversation. We've had so many now that we couldn't begin to count them, but the first one was pretty memorable. It happened. And that, at, yeah, go ahead. Yes. And if this is something that you enjoy or look forward to, can you please like, comment, and subscribe so we can grow our channel? Yes. Mm -hmm. We will toss out some ideas within this little storytelling that may be mm -hmm. useful to you, but at a later time, we may actually break it down with suggestions for those early conversations. Mm -hmm. If you go back to our very first episode, you'll hear the story of how we met. But we're going to pick it up here where I had texted Bernadette and asked if she and her husband and her two teenage children would like to come for mango ice cream, homemade mango ice cream on our deck. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, this was June. So it was yes. early June. June. Mm -hmm. So they immediately said yes, and we scheduled it for three or four days away. Mm -hmm. We were all still reeling, each of us in different ways, from the murder of George Floyd and the protests beginning in the activity around all of that. Mm -hmm. And we knew that we were getting together to not just socialize, but actually to talk about sensitive racial issues. So from a white woman's point of view, I've done a lot of personal growth work and I brought everything that I had learned from that work. I knew that I wanted to be primarily a listener. I did not try to share my own experiences or argue in any way. I just was a listener. I was able to be present. I've had a lot of training in just trying to be present and I knew that was my intention that night. I had talked with my husband about that and that was his intention too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where we began the conversation, but that was my intention, Bernadette? Yes, and our intention was to hope to have a good conversation and to not hear, yeah, but. Because oftentimes when you have conversations like this across racial lines and a black person or another ethnic person explains what their reality looks like, our white counterparts are, you know, have often said, yeah, but what about? And so that completely kills the conversation. And at that point, we had just finished with Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. Our emotions were too raw to hear a yeah, but from anybody. So that is honestly where we were coming from. We were just hoping neither of you said yeah, but. And we managed to not say yeah, but that yes. night. <laughs> and haven't it. said it since, have yet to say it, yes. <laughs> That's good, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there were many things that were touched upon that night. Micaiah, their daughter, contributed richly, and Solomon, their son, mm -hmm. contributed often just by listening and being very present mm -hmm. and occasionally speaking up. And I won't try to speak for them, but I will say that although there were many things I learned that night, I came away with the overall sense that the fact that Bernadette and I both love gardening and we're both women and we have mm -hmm. a lot of interest in personal growth mm -hmm. and we live four houses away. Look mm -hmm. at all these things we have in common. There common. is so much. Mm -hmm. But after hours, her life takes on a different flavor than mine. Mm -hmm. And as a well-intentioned white woman, which is mm -hmm. what I would describe myself as being, I really was unaware of that. And mm -hmm. what I learned that night was her periodic to chronic fears for her husband, her son, mm -hmm. that as they are a black man and a black boy that is mm -hmm. growing, she can't, I'm a mother of two sons, but I have never worried that the police would target them in any way for any reason. Mm -hmm. And that's a real fear for her, even though they or are not even, or not even the police, just a random person, because the people who shot the jogger or my armor were just random citizens. They weren't even right. law enforcement. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because of the situation in our country. I learned that, I learned what it was like for Robert during the time he was dating her to drive back and forth across the metro mm -hmm. and to to drive back and forth across the metro and to be stopped by 
law enforcement to ask mm -hmm. where he was going. And my yes. husband and I occasionally been stopped, but it's always been, oh, your taillight's out. And <laughs> wishing us well as we go on mm -hmm. our way. Mm -hmm. So it was a very different situation and both Stan and I were moved and, and um, dismayed to hear the reality of what mm -hmm. that was like for them. That was a big what, learning for me that night. Yeah, and what was most profound to me, you weren't necessarily speaking for yourself. It may have been something you read or someone else had seen, um, had said to you, but you said, I had to mourn of the story of what I thought America was. And that was the first time that I thought in order for white Americans to recognize that the America that the rest of us live in is not the America you've been sold would be a grief and a loss. And I had never had that concept or that thought ever because I live on the other side of it. It's always been separate Americas for people of color. But I never, I never, I don't, and I don't know why I didn't, but I never recognized it. Yes, but they would have to lay down the dream of what they thought America is in order to accept the reality of ours. Those two cannot go together. They simply can't. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was actually, I was speaking for myself that night, although okay. I'm pretty sure that there are many others with that similar view that mm -hmm. I, I gradually over the next several days, it's like, I thought America was truly the land of the free. Mm -hmm. And to realize this is happening to American citizens of various colors other than mm -hmm. white mm -hmm. on a pretty consistent basis. Microaggressions mm -hmm. and acts of racism on a regular basis and actual brutality and violence occasionally. Mm -hmm. And for me to take that all into my heart, which I tried to do that night, mm -hmm. it just didn't fit with my concept of what my country was. That yes, I right. know my country got problems, but it's the mm -hmm. best country in the world. And right. that night I wasn't feeling that. Mm -hmm. So I've had to reconcile that. And one, one thing that brought me comfort is Langston Hughes, beautiful poem, Let America Be America Again. Yes. I'll let you look that up, but it spoke mm -hmm. to that very issue that America never did really fulfill its dream. Um, no. And perhaps still can. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. Anything else that you want to say, Bernadette? No, I would say that would pretty much cover our first meeting. We were surprised at how long we talked because we originally thought, oh, we'll be an hour, hour and a half. We, I think we got there at six and before we knew it, it was 1130. Yes, I yes. remember that. Too. Yes, and if no one had looked at a watch, we probably would have still been talking. That's just how <laughs> fluid and comfortable the conversation was. And so I encourage people to have those with other safe people who are willing to have the conversation because you, you would be surprised at how much you learn and how fast the time flies. When yes. You're just sharing stories and truths right. of each other. Yeah. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. all right. So we wish you well and check in with us, like our channel and subscribe. We'll have all that set up at some point and we mm -hmm. appreciate you listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.